he must have had a great sense of self to be able to stick to his principles. He certainly did. Yeah. He certainly did. For a guy from Alligator, Mississippi, he resented the blacklist furiously, and we did everything we could to, to break it. We snuck people out of the shows. We changed names. We did everything. And we, we, uh, we got quite a number of people cleared. Wasn't he afraid of the network finding that out? No, he was, he was defiant. Go ahead. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> he was defiant about mm -hmm. it. He mm -hmm. didn't care. I mean, he, he, his attitude was, you guys from the network are, are cowards. You're, you're, you know, you're capitulating to all this crap. Did you see any difference in the way Fred approached his television producing as against what he was doing in oh, the theater? Oh, yes. Because, well, in theater, what he was doing was essentially putting on plays that were, were out of the American literature up on, on Broadway, you know, like mm -hmm. my sister Eileen. Here, what he was doing was he was uh, doing new, new works almost all, all the time, which meant that he had to treat with the writer from the very beginning so that his attitude toward the writers was the most exquisite and, 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 uh, and sensible that I knew. He, he would talk to people like Tad Moselle, J.P., Patty, Horton Foote, and say, how many do you want to do for me this year? Mm. They'd say, five. And he would say, okay, you got it. Five, do, do five shows. And sometimes they didn't finish. They couldn't get all five done. And <clears throat> my suspicion is that he paid them for five anyway. Is that right? Yeah, I think <laughs> that that's how it worked. And, it, and the same with us. Uh, we, we weren't making big money. I think I was making $300 a week as the director of Philco. But it was more money than I needed because, you know, you could, we had no other life. At that point, you finished one show, started casting the next one, and went into rehearsal. So I, I, I would often look in my jacket and find three or four paychecks, and I had forgotten to cash. I mean, it was just simply the, the show was so intense, mm -hmm. and the activity was so intense. And if you could survive it, it was really like being a test pilot. You know, if, if you could survive that pressure and, and still do the kind of work that Fred wanted, which was I mean, he worked only with the very best actors, with the very best writers. Uh, it was extraordinary, the quality of, of, uh, of expectation that was around that show. <clears throat> Not just from Fred, but each of the directors to each other. I mean, we all, we all were very admiring of each other, that we could do this. and. Uh, to this day, I saw Dell the other on Saturday, and we just throw our arms around each other, you know. There was a communal spirit. Enormous communal spirit. Mm -hmm. Enormous. We talked about <coughs> Fred's strengths. Dare we talk about any of his weaknesses? Oh, sure. His weakness was alcohol. <clears throat> not that he was a, how should I say, he was not an out of control alcoholic by any means. But he drank too much, certainly for a person with heart trouble. And it would eventually, that, that along with some other things which we can talk about later, uh, killed him. But, uh, but, but Fred was a man of enormous passion, great passion for the work. And uh, a terrific sense of humor. He, I mean, a terrific sense of appreciation. I remember doing a show with Walter Matthau and uh, I don't know what it was that happened, but there would I would hear this. <laughs> that was Fred's sort of signal response to something that really broke him up in the in a dry rehearsal when we weren't we weren't even on camera yet. But he would just be walking around watching, you know, and that that meant more to me than the the three hundred dollars a week. I was going to ask you what you think Fred's legacy is? I mean, you worked with him in, in television, and on Broadway, and in movies. And maybe those people are his, maybe you un, are un, his legacy. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly. It, it was the people, and it was also this sense that, that, that and they're almost, they're almost a vanishing breed now. 
that a truly great producer can exist without having 12 other thousand people be, be credited as producers, which is obviously a scam for getting other writers uh, in, in, on a show. And uh, to see the dignity and the skill and the aesthetic brilliance of a really truly talented producer. Uh, Fred, Fred should have all of the uh, credit that any one of us has and, and every one of us has. And, uh, Do you think he's received the credit that he's due? No, no. Not by a long shot. And, it, you know, if you weren't there, you, you, you wouldn't know what to credit.